this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do another uh, floral design on a glass bottle. I am going to be using, uh, let's see, three Magic paint brushes. And like I said, they're getting so well painted, it's hard for me to tell what they are. I think this is a six, a four, and probably a ten on that one. I'm going to be using a Deerfoot stippler. That is a number two. A fine line brush from Westonia, which is actually a fingernail brush, and a clay ball maker for some dotting that I'm going to be doing. Paint I'm using today is burnt sienna, red violet, wicker white, yellow ochre, thicket, forest moss, Pale yellow and school bus yellow. Alright, so I've cleaned off my bottle. This is a bottle that I reuse for videos, but in general, when you're doing glass painting, you should make sure that you wash your glass with soap and water, dry it, and then go over it with rubbing alcohol to make sure you've gotten all the lint off, all the oils from fingerprints and such before you begin. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use the larger of the flat brushes for my flower petals and I'm just going to show you this because my the way I'm set up here I don't have enough room to have my palette into the view of the camera but I'm just sticking each side into the colors that I want and then I'll go ahead and add some white to that as well. Now when you're when you're creating designs on glass it's a little bit different than painting on a regular surface, meaning that, uh, you know, you want to get good coverage. You want to not only get good coverage, but you just want to make sure that it's something that's going to stay on whenever, um, you know, somebody picks it up and that kind of thing. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's that I don't know how to say that it's that weak or whatever that it'll come off easily. But if you put a good coat of paint on it, like just a nice thick paint, a coat of paint, it will be more durable than if you were to just do it lightly and have it, you know, come uh, just be real thin. It would be easier for it to to come off. All right, so I'm just trying to. Just do a few petals here and looking at how I designed this prior because I always do my work on paper before I bring it onto my surface. And I like to kind of move my my brushes around so that the color that I lead on the outside is not always the same going around the entire flower. I think that that just helps give it a little bit more interest by doing this. That's my opinion. If you like to do it with it all the same color, that's fine. Feel free to do that. Now with these, I might go ahead and, I, well I am going to go ahead and go over them again. Just kind of lightly touching them because I don't want to pull the paint up but I do want, you know, to coat it again. So you just have to be careful when you go over it again because it can raise the paint up off the surface. And that's something you'll, you'll just learn as you go when you're painting. Um, just very, you know, the more experience you have, the more you're going to know, you know how to do that. Okay, so then I'm going to come over here a little bit. And actually, I'm going to start with this color. Just very lightly, you know, moving the brush. Doesn't have to be wiggled a lot, or you can wiggle it more. You're going to find that when you paint on glass, though, it's a little bit harder to do the wiggling because it has a tendency sometimes, depending on the colors that you're using, to bring up the paint. So that's why a lot of times you might find yourself just kind of tapping on so that you're not bringing it up. 
but we'll have a chance to come back over this again. And when you put white into your paint, a lot of times that gives you better surface coverage because the white is actually a little more opaque. And if you want to do the darker on the top, you know, you can. I just, in my sample, just was, continue to do the painting like I've been doing here. If you have any questions while you're watching this, please make sure that you put those questions down below. There's a space underneath the video where you can add your questions to it. And I will do my best to get back to you. Now keep in mind too, when I'm doing these videos, my intent on my channel is to create simple videos for people who are just beginning to paint, to feel comfortable, and to be creative. That's very, very important to me. Another thing you can do too when you're painting on glass is to maybe hit it with a hair dryer or something like that so that you can you know get get it to dry a little quicker. But that's you know that's up to you. Or you can give it some drying time on its own. I just like roughly your leaves, if you're wondering. If you get too much paint on your brush, just go ahead and wipe it off with a on a paper towel. That is fine. And these petals are meant to be just a partial flower, not a whole open flower. going to keep doing it. Try not to touch my other side onto the paper below. My tissue paper. And I apologize. My furnace is actually running right now. It's what you're hearing in the background, the loud noise. Sorry about that. But I do my videos in my utility room. That's where my work room is. Okay, so I have that, and I'm going to do one more that's partially open. And these are fun. Like I said, this is just a, a light, cheery kind of a design. Not difficult. Not meant to be difficult. I'm going to come over here with that. more of that little yellow in there and it is definitely okay if it kind of overlaps the, the flower next to it it's kind of the part of nature you know when you're putting a bouquet together or something of that sort it's going to overlap that's pretty pretty common all right so what I'm going to do next then is pick up my next brush. Actually, I'm going to do it with, with this one because I want to do some little purple, purple flowers. So I'm double loading and I'll be touching them into white as well. I'm going to do these before I add anything else to my design just for the mere reason that I want to get them done. Hold on. Get them done before I add the greenery in. So I'm basically just going to be doing kind of like the same, the same, the same designs as far as the leaves or petals themselves. But I'm going to have them just right up here against the flower.
I'm just adding some more white in here. And any time that I paint, probably my main focus is being worried about the coverage. And when you're doing it on a bottle like this, it's not as concerning as it would be if you're doing a wine glass or something to that effect because that's something that's going to be handled more often and washed for frequently. Whereas this is just a home decor piece, so chances of it being handled a whole lot is probably minimal. But I just want you to, to understand the importance of the paint being on here thickly. But not too thick. I mean, you don't want it to bubble when you bake it either, because that does happen if it gets too thick. And of course, if you have a design like that, this paint does air dry, air cure within 21 days. So you just have to keep that in mind. That is an option if you feel that you don't want to, to risk it bubbling. All right, so I have a little flower there. Now I'm going to pick another spot. Let's go down, maybe down here, and then just add some more of these. All right, so we're going to come down here, and I'm just going to keep loading my brush, putting the amount of paint that I feel like I need to get the good coverage. Again, you'll see that I'm just kind of touching it. And I can do some wiggling here and come back. Yeah, if you choose just to let it sit for a little bit and give it some dry time, just be careful when you come back in to paint. It's possible that it could raise the paint up that's underneath that's dried. So just make sure you do just very light, light strokes on it so that it's not, you know, not actually pulling up because they do. I mean, unfortunately, it will raise the paint. So I kind of like to just keep painting it as I'm going just to keep that from happening. My brush turned around here. I'll just keep working on this. Okay, got the basic shape down. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is start putting in the greenery. And I'm doing that right now just by, stop for a second here, just by dipping the sides in and doing the blending strokes. Once again, I'm going to add some white. Might even have some purple in it since my white has purple in it. Eventually, I'm going to add some of the burnt sienna into it. And I appreciate your patience. We're getting close to being finished. Just not quite yet. All right, so then I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, well, let's pretend we're putting a stem there. We're going to put a stem here. And yeah, make it like it's coming down here. And yeah, I'm not going to actually make it a stem down to the bottom, but you can if you want. It's just kind of giving me some direction by doing it like this. And then I'm going to just do some basic pulls here. And I can turn my brush around, can make it, you know, to where I have the olivey color going. Make them longer, shorter. Just whatever, whatever you feel like doing. It's it's all up to you. But it can go around that and just not be like the, the normal where I do my my simple little one stroke leaves. This is you know something just a tad bit different. And you can come out, you can make them longer. I said I'm getting to a point where I think I'm getting too much paint on my brush. But you get the gist, right? Okay, I'm going to wash that off a little bit. And then I'm going to come back here, reload my brush. And then what I'm going to do is start doing my leaves. Now, the attempt here I'm doing is just trying to do some just kind of more jaggedy edge leaves on this. 
if that makes sense. And then come up here, do the same thing. I just have to be careful when I'm going over the top of this leaf because it, you know, may pull in some of the yellow from underneath. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more on here. The white. Get some of the darker green in here too. I just have to be careful because I see that it's starting to pull up. And I don't really want it to do that. So I'm just going to pull my stem through here just lightly. And then to just keep going with this. See what I'm talking about? There's like some spots right here that are pulled away from the glass. So I have to be careful with that. I'm going to come over here. Do it again. So I'm just basically wiggling and coming in and out, in and out. I'm going to go over it again. Just have to be careful. Just can't stress that enough because you want good coverage. You want all these little little spots that I've opened up. If they do, you want them covered as well. And then just keep keep working it out. Like that. Pretty simple. Now you can do you know a variety of styles of leaves. You don't have to do just one kind. You can do a couple, you can do different colors, just to make it a little more interesting. Alright, so then I'm going to come over here, I want to make sure, good coverage. Alright, now we're going to do this one. I'm just doing a little bit of wiggling. A little bit of wiggling and come back and add some darker. And I'm just going to come down here. Do it. Just come back up like that. And then come over here. And that's just kind of a funny little leaf. Just pull it like that. Or you can make it a little darker with a little stem like that pretty simple so far right and you can double these up if you want like two leaves together you, know, you can always put put another leaf over here add a little white to this there's a little purple in it which I figured at some point it would because I have purple in that color Okay, if you don't like the purple, then rinse your brush out and do it again. I just don't like to waste paint. Alright, so I'm going to go through here again, like that. Like so, so this is what we have so far. I'm going to add a couple more of these, and then we'll go on to just a couple other things. I did get paint in there. Very pretty. If, if you're new to bottle painting, I hope these videos help. Um, again, just make sure you let me know if you have any questions. If you're interested in any of the products that I'm using, I'm trying to link affiliate links underneath my new videos. Feel free to buy them from the links. Or at least check them out. I would certainly appreciate that. Alright, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of my the burnt sienna, some of my green, my thicket green, my oh my moss green just kind of do so I want a little bit of a rusty color in it 
and I'm going to do, first of all I'm going to do some poles that will come out, come out around and down. I, I like to call them poles, I don't even know really, because this is kind of a filler, filler vine or whatnot, but I call them poles, so I don't know, it may sound a little confusing at times, but this is what I'm talking about when I say poles, just things that I'm pulling, and maybe just go like that. And then what I'm going to do is come over to this crazy color and I'm just going to start doing poles that come directly to goodness, my dogs drive me insane when I'm doing videos. I'm just doing real light little touch poles. They might have a little bit of the burnt sienna on them. I might Turn them around where they have some green, the forest moss green. But see, just like that, just very, very easy. You go on like that, just clear down. And I keep mixing in different colors as I go. still hear her. I apologize. Every day. I don't know what she's barking at. But anyhow, if you see, you know, as I'm going here, kind of got a little crazy with that one, but I'm just pulling them towards the stem and injecting different colors as I go. And actually going a little bit too with the lengths. You know, some are long, some are small doesn't matter. And then some of them I might pull in some white just to make them stand out a little bit. But you just keep going down the stem. And like I said, you can do long ones, you can do short ones, you can do add spaces, you can use some of it out you know, where it doesn't have anything, no filler, just plain. And you keep going like that. All the way down. See, like that. I think it's pretty. I mean, it just, it's just kind of a filler. Kind of a filler. It has a little bit of brown in it. Pull it like that. Pull it down. This is where I like to you know, get them different lengths. They can be shorter, longer. And you can go back over them if you feel like there's a part that needs to be filled in. And maybe when you did a pull on it, it messed up the one below it. That's fine. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to come over it. Over it. I'm going to do this. Do this. I hope you're enjoying this. I truly do. Just very, very cute. There we go on that one. And then we have one more at the top here. We're, we're getting close to being finished, so please bear with me. I always like for you to see the, the end product. And we're doing the same thing here that we've been doing all the way. You can push down more if you want, or you can do it thinner. The pressure is really what determines the style of the leaf that you're that you're painting. And if you feel like you need more color on something, just go ahead and put it put it on there. Just easily, easily do it so you're not tearing up something that you already painted or making the paint raise up.
and anything that I do it's just a suggestion it's just giving you ideas so if you want to improve upon them or do something different please feel free to do so my my ideas or my designs are just strictly for the purpose of showing you what can be done to give you some ideas it is not ever something where I say well this is the only way you can do it you're not going to hear that from me because I don't believe that alright so we have this so far and I think it's very pretty to finish it off I'm going to take my Deerfoot stippler I'm going to put it into my school bus yellow and I'm just tapping down just filling the whole thing with the yellow I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tap in my centers just very quickly nothing special just very quickly done and on these I'm tapping in centers so that you can see them see them very easily okay then I'm going to take this brush going to dip it into my burnt sienna then I'm just going to come through here and do a lot of this clear into the center here clear into it now on these you can take some time and actually put some yellow tips on these once you're done and I'm doing it all the way around I'm going to come down into the leaf oops stuck in the wrong paint just have it come down you can have it you know kind of going over each piece that's already been painted and you can fill up the center very very much so or if you don't like this style you can leave the center just painted like it was and call it a day use a different, couple different colors with it at the same time that's up to you but I want this to be pretty pretty filled out I guess is how I want to want to use it you'll see how I finish them off here in a minute like I said, and if you don't like this part, then you know finish the center however you want. Not something you have to do. And I'm just doing it very quickly, so it's not probably the neatest, neatest example. But I do like this brush. I need to get some new ones. It's pretty much about had it. And again, I'm letting this come down into the leaf on purpose and I'm going to do this one hmm, can to keep going here and just keep keep pulling them out just crossing them over just slightly pulling them They're very full, and that's intentional. When you're done with that part, I'm going to clean it out a little bit because I'm going to come back over to my purple ones. But I'm going to take the white. Actually, my white is pretty colored right now. And then just stick a center dot in here. So you can see a little bit of the yellow that we used. Got a little green in there. If you see my white, you would understand like that so it's just and you can put dots around the centers or you can come back in with this brush and just do some light pulls like this around it just wispy you know obviously I have a lot of a lot of uh, pieces coming out here so I'm not going to put one on each end just going around it to symbolize that it would have these on it up to you Use your creativity. Oh, I wish my dog would stop barking. I do apologize. She makes it very tough. So what I'm going to do, the last thing I'm going to finish off with, take, well actually do two things. I'm going to take this brush again and just kind of do some pulls into the purple using the red violet. 
Just kind of doing the same thing. You don't have to do it as thick if you don't want. This one I'm just going to do some in, but I'm not putting a dot. And I'm going to do here, just like that. I'm not going to put anything on the tips, just pulling it up in here. And then I'm going to use the same thing that I just did the dots with on the other one. I'm going to put a center dot and a center dot, just like that. Again, if you want to make it fancier, put some dots around it, put some dots on the ends of those, you know, however you want to do it. All right, that's pretty, I think. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And before you go, if you would share this on your social network with all your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you, and until the next time, please stay safe and healthy, and have a good one.